everybody, Joe Joseph here for thedailysheeple.com, and this is your news shot, sciencenews.org, one of my favorite websites, talking about dinosaurs. Let us not forget, dinosaurs is a 19th century term that uh, was created to give creatures of dinosaur ilk a new name, something that went in line with the whole evolution theory. Now, that's not to say that we don't evolve or animals don't evolve. It was built into our programming to evolve. But dinosaurs themselves used to be called dragon before the 19th century. Well, scientists and paleontologists have found a new dinosaur, and it resurrects a demon from Ghostbusters, believe it or not. Says here, Zool is back. But don't bother calling the Ghostbusters, because Zool, my friends, is a Dinah. There is no Dana. There is only Zool. A 75 million year old, <laughs> 75 million year old, skeleton unearthed in Montana in 2014 reveals a tank-like dinosaur with a spike club tail and a face that probably looked a lot like its cinematic namesake. Uh, the find is the most complete fossil of any ankylosaur. A type of armored dinosaur found in North America. Researchers report in a May 10th uh, issue of the Royal so Society Open Science. It includes a complete skull and tail club, plus some preserved soft tissue. Some preserved <clears throat> soft tissue. Soft tissue that's lived 75 million years. Let us just put that into perspective for just a second, shall we? It says it really gives us a good idea of what these animals look like. Well, of course it has. Let me stop there because this the the soft tissue is very very telling of its age. You have to understand that carbon dating, uh, even the inventor of carbon dating, called it BS. You know, all of these scientists at the end of their life, they all have this come to Jesus moment, and rightfully so because science and spirituality do not compete with each other; they complement one another. And they always come out and have this, you know, well, before I die, I might as well let the cat out of the bag. Eh, hey, you know, this uh, carbon dating stuff that uh, I invented? Yeah, it's pointless. It's worthless. It doesn't, it doesn't work. You can take a fossilized pickle. And believe me, it doesn't take long for you to fossilize a pickle. You can do it very simply. Um, and bring it to a carbon dating person. And it could have taken you two years to fossilize this pickle but it'll come back being 10 million years old. I mean, there's so many cases of this, it's not even funny. Not to mention, soft tissue does not survive 75 million years. Look at people we bury in the ground. What's any different than a dinosaur? Here, we're our flesh and bone. They're flesh and bone. See what happens to somebody and how fast they decompose. You know, and we preserve ourselves. You know, we fill ourselves with embalming fluid and all that when we die. Guess what? Dinosaurs? No. They don't have the dinosaur undertaker, you know, that goes and preserves body and soft tissue that lasts 75 million years. It doesn't happen. But what this does do is it gives further relevance and credibility to a cataclysmic event that occurred that quite possibly could have been triggered by asteroids. However, I doubt it, but looks more to me like more evidence for the flood. Now, if you want a good example of how water, massive amounts of water or massive amounts of lava or any other liquid material, how fast it can cut through, how fast it can bury things, how fast it can change landscapes, you need look no further than Mount St. Helens. If you're old enough to think back and remember the Mount St. Helens eruption, there was a vast forest that sat right where Mount St. Helens at the base of it. That's now just a desolate, oh, it looks like a mini Grand Canyon. That forest, of course, is hundreds of feet below um, these compressed ash and lava rock that was spewed out of Mount St. Helens when it blew the top off it. It happened in a matter of minutes. But you look at the Grand Canyon, you compare Mount St. Helens, and guess what you got? Two very similar circumstances that happened in minutes or days, not over millions of years. Due to a cataclysmic event of some sort. 
Now, the longer that we try to fool ourselves into thinking, oh, yes, well, this is a process. The Colorado River cut the Grand Canyon out over millions and millions of years. Okay, as long as we go with that, then we can never really prepare for any future cataclysmic events that might take place because we don't give a crap to look at the real science, the reality of the situation. Instead, we have to buy in to a bunch of BS that was designed specifically, designed specifically to pit spirituality against science. Some of our most prestigious universities that have been around for hundreds and hundreds of years often have sayings over their doorways into their science buildings or uh, other buildings that give credit, give credit to a creator because there's just too much evidence to say that everything came from a pile or a puddle of slime. If things are too complex. And for soft tissue to live for 75 million years when human soft tissue doesn't live for 75, hell, 100 years, you know, you have to ask the question, is this quackery or... Is there another explanation to it? And I think you'll come to find there's another more valuable explanation to it. Check out uh, the research of Del Tackett. Del Tackett has done some great research into the into the whole Genesis story and makes a great case. He's got a, a documentary over on Netflix, you know, that discusses the validity of Genesis and were we intel intelligently created, you know? Yesterday I talked about were we alone in the world or the discovery or the imminent discovery of alien life within our solar system. Yes, microbes, my friends, microbes. That's what they'd have you focus on. They'd have you focus on microbes instead of the non-human elongated skulls found in South America or the megalithic structures all over the world or the pyramids they found in Antarctica or otherwise. All of these structures that, if we go with mainstream uh, technology, uh, science and mainstream history, no way that human beings could construct these edifices, these these, uh, these buildings, these structures, these megalithic structures. No way. We didn't have the technology. Brass hammers, brass saws, you know. How do we do it? How did we build the pyramids? because we had help. And the sooner that we come to grips with that, the better off we'll all be. I'm Joe Joseph. This was the DailySheeble.com's new shot. Feel free to comment below, and I'll see you again real soon. Take care.